The Game Awards just had some of the biggest game announcements and reveals in the entire gaming industry. Was there a lot of commercials? Sure. But most of the time, I was salivating over these reveals that were on that show. Let's get into what Xbox showed, what Sony showed, and also look at some of the biggest games the industry has to offer. All I can say is Space Marine 2 is coming, and there's a lot to show here, so let's get into this. Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and that like button. The support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to be notified on future content, hit that small little bell icon. And if you want to go that extra mile to support the channel, hit that join button. It helps out a lot. Okay, so enough of that. Let's get into these games because there are a lot of them. Yet I do have to admit, Xbox came and showed probably some of the biggest games and definitely the best looking game we've ever seen with Hellblade 2. There's no debate, there's no discussion. Hellblade 2 was the best looking game we've ever seen. Now, as for Sony, they came with a couple of games that everyone knew was coming out next year. So I have to admit, I'm a little surprised by what was shown by Xbox and Sony. They didn't come guns blazing with a lot of big announcements. Yet the third party developers came to show and had themselves a massive showing that I thought stole the whole thing. But I do want to start off by talking about Xbox. Let's get into Hellblade 2. Okay, okay, just look at this game. Hellblade 2 has been in development for quite some time. The first one, I believe, came out in 2017. So it's been four years since that game came out. Yet in that time, Ninja Theory has joined Xbox and probably hired a bunch of people to their studio. So they've been quite busy. And after seeing this gameplay trailer from them, it's almost impossible to imagine that this is actual gameplay. The motion capture is some of the best we've ever seen in gaming. The graphics, the detail animations, and of course the sound are all top notch. You can easily see that Ninja Theory aimed to make the best looking game we've ever seen before. In fact, one of their job postings on this for this game a few years ago said that they wanted to do that. They wanted to make a graphical showpiece that will show what the next generation hardware can truly do. And since they have the most powerful console on the planet with the Xbox Series X to work with, you can see they weren't lying. So kudos to them because they made a game that looked insane. After that, Xbox showed off a couple of other games like Crossfire X, which is a console exclusive. This game has been in hiding for what seems like forever. Yet finally, we have a release date of February. I'm excited for this game and I think it's going to be a pretty cool experience, yet I'm not expecting much from it. You throw in a Plague Tale and Crossfire X and you can see that Xbox actually has some big AAA games going to Game Pass day and date for the 2022 year. This doesn't even include the first party games that they have lined up. So again, Xbox showed up and gave us some awesome exclusive games we're going to play on our console or on our PC. So I'm glad they went there. Which brings me to the biggest announcement at the award show for me personally, which is Warhammer 40K Space Marine 2. Okay, okay, I don't care what anyone says, I'm so hyped for this beyond belief. I have talked about this game multiple times, I've talked about it on the RDX podcast, I've mentioned it in my videos, I've even said that Xbox should look into Warhammer 40K universe to maybe get a third party or even first party exclusive rights. Put a studio on the game, give them time, and maybe, just maybe, we could get a sequel to one of my favorite games the last 10 years. And wouldn't you know it, my wish came true. We have a sequel to Space Marine. And just so everyone knows, at the end of the reveal, the game only says Xbox Series X and PC release. So to me, this was a deal struck by Xbox and they funded the entire production of the game. Or it could just be a marketing deal. I also think that the game might just come to Game Pass because after the trailer, the Xbox logo came up. But I do believe it'll come to PS5 maybe at a later date or, you know, at a timed exclusive. Yet, this is going to be made by the same people that made World War Z, which is a game I absolutely adored. And it looks like they're taking that foundation from that game and turning Space Marine into a co-op adventure with multiple friends. Outside of the insane look that Hellblade 2 had, this game was the biggest surprise to me. I honestly screamed when I saw the reveal. I'm so happy for this and I can't express how happy it's going to be on Xbox or the PC and the two platforms I play on the most. So hype all around for this thing. But now let's move over to Sony, which honestly didn't have that great of a showing. The first thing they showed was Horizon Forbidden West, which looked awesome as usual. I have to admit, I'm excited for the game and it's a huge one that will be one of the biggest games of 2022. I'm actually going to be playing the first game this holiday season after I'm done with Halo Infinite. I'm going to play it on my PC with my Xbox controller and see what all the hype is about because I know a lot of people adore this new franchise and from what I've seen from the trailers, the gameplay reveals this game looks to be one of Sony's biggest games ever. Not 
Not to mention, Guerrilla Games is very talented. They have their own engine, they have a bunch of talent there, and it's a massive studio. So I know this game is going to look good. They've shown multiple gameplay clips now for what seems like a year and a half. So you know what? Bring it on. Can't wait for February because I'm going to dive into that on my PS5. So I'm actually excited for that. From there, we got Forspoken, which again, looks pretty awesome. This is a game that we've seen multiple times and has been announced for what seems like forever now. Yet in 2022, we'll finally get to play it, and I believe this is a console exclusive, so I expect to see this on PC soon after, or even when it launches. Something like we saw with Kena Bridge of Spirits. Yet the game does look pretty interesting, and I think the developers behind this might have something special on their hands. Okay, so those were the biggest things that I saw from Sony and Xbox. Now let's get into the third party developers and what they had to show us. The first thing we have to talk about is Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League. This gameplay reveal was freaking awesome. The characters, the world, the combat, everything you saw here was high quality. Rocksteady are some of the best developers in the world and they've made some of the best superhero games that we've ever seen in the Batman Arkham series. So for them to finally reveal the Suicide Squad gameplay makes me that much more excited. And how could you not be excited? Just look at this gameplay. It looks polished and it looks insane. I was looking forward to Gotham Knights and it was at the top of my list even over Suicide Squad. But after seeing this gameplay reveal, I have to say, this game just jumped to the top of my list for expectations for 2022. It's almost like you forget how talented Rocksteady is and how talented WB games are. If they're up for sale, I really, really hope Xbox or somebody big buys them because right now, they're about to bring out some amazing games and Suicide Squad's at the top of that list with especially how talented Rocksteady is and how good they've made their games. Not to mention, polished. Which brings me to the next game. Wonder Woman. I have to flex for a second. I said months ago and months ago that a Wonder Woman game is almost a no-brainer. The franchise has taken off since the movies came out and the character is so easy to make a game with. You have a shield, a sword, lasso, and godlike abilities. How could you not make a game about this? Not to mention, she's one of the most iconic female leads in comic books, movies, and now video games. I can't wait for this and I can't wait even more knowing it's going to be made by Monolith Games, the people behind Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War. Talk about a talented team that knows how to make a massive game and then not to mention build on that game If you haven't played those Shadow of Mordor or Shadow of War games, please give them a try I think I almost a thousand out of a thousand achievement points Shadow of Mordor that game was so addictive now they're making Wonder Woman. I can't wait to see what they're gonna do, especially since this is another comic book game coming out. But now let's move on to the next game I wanna talk about, which is Star Wars Eclipse. This game had a pretty awesome trailer, and most people will say it didn't show anything. But to me, it showed everything I wanted from a Star Wars game for a very, very long time. It's not going to fill in the Skywalker saga and all that mess. It's going to go back in time and give us a proper Star Wars game set in the old times. I've said this needed to happen for a very long time, and I'm just glad Glad they finally decided to do this. This franchise has such a rich history and they can tap into that so easily. Go back in time, pick new characters, and let's have a crazy Star Wars games that have multiple Sith, multiple Jedi that are just going at it in this war. Not to mention, the world is so expansive, you can get new characters and develop new abilities or new characters that do crazy things. All those things is what I want to see in a Star Wars game. I think it's going to be a hit if they do this right. And those are the biggest announcements I saw at the Game Awards. Now, I know there's tons more and a lot of other content that they showed us, but for me, these are the big games I'm going to be playing for sure no matter what next year. And to be honest, there was probably 10 or 15 other games in this show that I wanted to play. Yet, those are the ones that have me the most hyped. I'm excited to jump into these and I'm excited to see what else is coming next year. Because 2022 for games looks stacked. There's going to be well over 25 games I want to play, well over 25 games that are probably going to come out that blow our minds. I think we'll have games almost every single month, if not every single week coming out. And after E3 this year and the Game Awards now, I have to say, gaming has come a long way. We finally have basically two massive events a year. Events that get us hyped, that get us excited for the hobby we love the most, which is gaming. And I'm glad for the most part, everyone was excited for the games. They were excited to play these games and look at the gameplay reveals. Not the console war, the dumb drama stuff, just games. I hope that continues and I hope gaming continues to grow. Cause you know what, having just three or four days of game reveals at E3 is great and I love that moment and I'm always going to cherish those. But I also want something else, just like we have in December now with the Game Awards where they show us even more games. I mean, they're kind of competing, E3 and Game Awards. And I have to say, Game Awards took the cake this year. They showed us so many 
games. And Xbox was there, Sony was there, everybody was there, even Nintendo. So I'm glad that this happened. I'm glad that we saw all these reveals. And I'm even more glad we're going to get to play all of these games. But enough of what I think. Tell me what you think. What game are you most hyped about and why is it Space Marine 2? What game did you want to see the most that wasn't there? Is there a game I didn't talk about that you were excited about? Will E3 be even bigger than this? Has the Game Awards taken over E3 in announcements? Go down below and let me know. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit that subscribe button and that like button to support us out the channel more than you know. And give me a follow on Twitter at Zalker87. I'm always on there talking games and sharing my latest videos. Plus, I love interacting with everyone there. So get on Twitter and let's talk about gaming. Also, follow me on Xbox Live. My gamer tag is Zalker87, just like my channel name. See what games I'm playing and let's compete in achievements for the month. So right now, I'm deep into Halo Infinite's campaign. I don't care what anybody says. I think I'm about 11 hours in and I love every minute of it. I'm doing every single thing in the open world. I'm enjoying it. I think it looks stunning. I've been playing it on the Xbox and my PC, kind of switching between both to see how it looks. And I got to say the performance mode at 120 on the Series X looks awesome. And on PC, it looks equally great. I got to say, they did a good job. 343 three pulled this out. The high ratings, everything's looking great. People are loving it. And you know what? I'm probably going to put in 20, 25 hours into this game that's a massive halo campaign and i love every single moment of it let me know if you're playing it let me know if you're playing something on your ps5 or you play something on your pc because right now halo is out and there's a couple games coming out this month that i want to play not to mention 2022 is about to kick off big time so let me know what you're playing because that's what we're here for is to talk games and that's all for now thanks for watching and until next time remember enjoy your gaming later